This is Lola Lola. I moved her to uh, this uh, bird cage that's outside, very close spacing on the bars. So I normally put um, cottontails that I'm, I'm raising and rehabbing in here. I wanted to give her some space and uh, be outside while it's warm today, while we're uh, up into the uh, 70s before uh, we get another cold front tonight and get cold again. I'll bring her back inside. But I'm going to try to feed her. Uh, she had previously been fed um, live, live rats. Her uh, owner, who gave her up, was feeding her live rats. And she's not going to be real cooperative, but uh, she's got a scar on the end of her snout from where one of those live rats uh, got her. Rodents are smart. They're very capable of fighting back. And they can injure your snake very badly. If the snake does not subdue them right away or uh, if the rat or the mouse has any leverage whatsoever and can reach one of the snake's eyes, that's, that's the first thing that it'll usually go for is it'll chew your snake's eye right out, put, put its eye out. And then you got a snake that forever is going to be disabled. It's not going to be accurate when it, it tries to strike, so you're forever going to have problems with, uh, with it feeding from there on out. All along a snake's body, there's a vital organ pretty much uh, along every inch except for the very end of the tail. Rodent uh, teeth are very long and sharp, and if they puncture in just the wrong place, they can uh, very easily puncture uh, your snake's uh, lung, or heart or liver or something like that and um, that would spell disaster. It only takes one time and uh, snakes are very um, vulnerable to that sort of thing because of the, the way they're built. Most snakes only have one functional lung anyway so you definitely don't want to risk their only lung being punctured. Uh, additionally, rodents like to, uh, if you've ever tried to catch a rat or a mouse uh, in your house or in your garage, you've probably noted they like to run along the walls. They'll hug the perimeter that's what a live rodent will do when you drop them in a cage with a snake. And if that snake strikes and misses and hits the wall of your terrarium, uh, particularly the lower jaw is very thin and fragile and susceptible to breaking if uh, she took a, a hard strike and, and missed, hit the glass or something like that. So you also risk breaking the jaw of your snake. So there's a, there's a lot of reasons besides it just being inhumane to throw a live rodent into, into a terrarium and make it fight for its, its life. That's, that's inhumane in itself. You have all these other risks to the snake as well. I've been doing this a long time and I've never had to feed live. With some of these ball pythons, they can be picky. They're from Africa. There's a small rodent known as a jerboa, and it kind of looks like a, a big kangaroo rat. Uh, one of its closest relatives would be a, a gerbil. A lot of times when people have these ball pythons, the uh, ball python is finicky and does not want to eat rats or mice. So they think they have to use live, and sometimes that works, but that's not really what the, what the biggest problem with the ball pythons is. It's that they're not used to that prey. I've got a couple of uh, large mice here we're going to try. I'm going to be conditioning her to get off of live food because we're not going to do that. Rats are expensive uh, in this uh, period where I'm trying to, uh, to teach her to eat uh, frozen. I'm going to be using a couple of mice first. This came from uh, the hamster bedding. What this is for is scenting the, uh, scenting the prey. We're going to take these mice and then rub them in this bedding here to try to get some of the, uh, the uh, hamster scent on them. I don't know. This will be the first time I'm trying with a uh, hamster bedding. I've done gerbil before and that that always works. One of the other things that people do wrong when they're trying to, when they say, oh, my ball python won't eat anything but live. It's just you don't know what you're doing and you haven't tried everything yet. I have never failed to get any snake to eat a, a frozen rodent. I've never had to use live, ever, with any snake. And I'm talking about everything from wild rattlesnakes to ball pythons. These ball pythons... They're also kind of like uh, rattlesnakes. They have uh, heat sensing pits on their snout. So they're, uh, they're, they're heat sensing animals, uh, heat sensing snakes too. And one of the mistakes that people make whenever they say, my snake won't eat 
anything unless it's live. It's because they've they've let the the food get cold. And for a, a snake like this one, she may not be interested in eating it if it's uh, if it's cold. So I've got some hot water in the bottom there, and I'm going to scent these real quick, and we're going to see if she's interested in eating them. Had an idea though. First off, I'm going to I'm going to see if maybe she's interested in eating one that uh, that hasn't been scented. Most cases, a reptile that is uh, in new surroundings, that has uh, changed hands, and they're being kept in a new, uh, new enclosure and everything, a lot of times they're stressed, and they don't know what's going on, they don't feel comfortable, and they won't eat. They usually won't eat in situations like this. Some, sometimes it may take them a couple of weeks before they get their appetite. She's really more interested in, uh, in trying to get out of that, this cage than anything. Not really interested though, because she's not she's not following it with her eyes. She's she's just not interested in eating. She just wants to get out. You just want to get out, don't you, girl? So we'll scent one then and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I scented this one. A lot of people or under the mistaken impression, this goes around in hobbyist circles, a lot of these hobbyists, uh, a lot of them who really, really think they know what they're talking about, give this advice that you have to move your snake into a different terrarium, like a feeding tank or something to, to feed them. You absolutely don't have to do that. You don't have to move any snake somewhere differently to feed them. They're actually going to be more comfortable if you feed them in the terrarium that they live in. It's just a whole lot less risk and a lot less trouble. This one has the hamster scent on it. She seems to be more interested in this one. No. Okay, I'm gonna leave it, leave it there for you. A lot of these people who say you have to move your snake and feed them elsewhere, their rationale is that if you feed the snake in the same terrarium where it lives, it's more likely to bite you whenever you stick your hand in there because then they somehow associate their home with food and then therefore they will, uh, they will bite you. That's not really true. The mistake that these people are generally making is that they may be feeding by hand. So they have rodent scent on their hands. They're not using utensils like I am, long-handled forceps, or they're not using gloves. They get uh, rodent scent on them. And uh, there you go. Hamster scent worked. Previous owners said they've had this snake for six years, and she would only eat live. I've had this ball python two days. This is the first day I've offered her food. Works every time it's tried. Never failed to get a snake off of live, but there's a trick. You have to make sure it's properly scented. You have to make sure the snake is warm enough and is in the mood to eat. You have to make sure that the prey is warm enough so that the snake may be fooled into thinking that it's still alive. But scent plays a big part of that. You notice that she got closer and she kept smelling and smelling and finally she was convinced. Maybe she's going to swallow it the wrong way. Uh, getting back to what I was talking about with these people that say you can't feed the snake in the same terrarium where it lives. If you're using your bare hands, yeah, the snake, it, it's, it's not about conditioning the snake that um, they associate their home terrarium with feeding. It's that they're associating your hand with feeding. If you're using utensils to give you the standoff distance and you're using gloves, you're not, you're not getting the rodent scent on you. The snake starts to, what it does is it associates the utensils or the rodent itself with food. And I've never had to use a feeding tank. And there's, uh, there's really no reason why you should have to either if you're using proper technique. Now, I don't know what she's doing here. She's not really subduing it. She's not really trying to eat it either. But either way, even if she doesn't eat it, this uh, validates for me that I'm not going to have a whole lot of problems. Even if she doesn't eat it this time, she probably will another time. 
the the fact that she even struck this and he held on to it this this quickly after being introduced to a hamster scented mouse yeah she's gonna eat it she's just gonna <laughs> she's gonna eat it from the from the back end which is the wrong way yeah it's just that that simple so here's she's a smart snake she knows what she's doing just all that work in the mouse around in her mouth she was just uh, turning it around so now she's swallowing it the right way so leave her be